Have you been reading a lot of research about the UK personally? But my, um, they're trying to extend the life of animals like mine. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen a lot of disease in this country, and they can so abuse be healed pretty easily by just following some basic uh, natural healing, holistic uh, healing, and kind of things like that. And in my view, I think by just following some rules and holistic medicine, we can pretty much take care of the body beyond what we have now. And my question to you is, what is what's your take on this uh, life extension? Well, when it comes to life extension, I, I will have to. I will say that when I've in my travels, I mean, I traveled for about ten years. Uh, in, in various countries, and part of what I did it during that time, the question was about life extension. This mic, might be a little bit more effective. this mic, is that better? Yeah. The question was very clear. The question was clear? Yeah, but the answer was not clear. Okay. <laughs> you can just hold it because I'll put it back. Um, so the question about life extension, and my own observations, because I was, I was studying medicine as I traveled, and I was looking for teachers, spending time with teachers, and I found people that lived to be very old, and most of the, the oldest people I found were in Morocco and Pakistan. And uh, in fact, there was a man that I went to visit in Pakistan who he claimed to be 156. And people around him believed that he was 156. I believed it after meeting him. But he was an exceptional man. Um, and you're right, by living naturally and living, as I said before in our, the lecture, living in a connected way uh, and eating what I call real health foods, that is natural foods uh, and traditional foods. The traditional, part of what we miss in the modern diet that we, part of the expense of our, the, 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 the excess, it's not, it's not abundance. It's not abundance that we have available to us here, it's excess. And part of what we miss, for example, in, uh, in traditional societies, if you killed a chicken or a goat or a sheep, you used every part of that animal and traditionally, we did not have refrigeration or means of preserving it other than by pickling or drying. And these methods of traditionally storing food had a second benefit. And that was because most of the things that are pickled and traditionally uh, preserved have a, a life. You, for example, most of the things that are pickled uh, they have a, a enzymes and they have a life to them that aid our digestion, aid assimilation, and they're actually medicines. So things like yogurt, uh, pickled cabbage, you know, find every culture, almost every culture across the world pickles cabbage. Nowadays, we don't pickle anything. You know, that is you take a fruit or a vegetable and you chop it and you put it in salt and you use the salt to preserve it. Or you dry it. Or you put it in oil. In Morocco, they do the lemons. You know, they pickle the lemons. And this has been lost, but we don't realize that while we lost that, we lost the, nutritious value, the nutrition, nutritional value that came from that as well. Real yogurt. You can hardly go to a market and, and buy real yogurt. You can make real yogurt. That is real live yogurt. All of these things are very beneficial to our health, and they enable us to manage other foods and to keep well and healthy. The other thing is they used all parts of the animal. So if you take the bones and you cook the bones and you make the stock from the bones and you use that stock, traditionally that happened in Arab countries where they would take the stock and you put some of that into the rice. The way in which you, do, you digest the rice has changed from the, uh, from the juices and the, the, uh, the gelatinous kind of stuff that comes out from the ankles and the, the joints of the bones. But using all of the parts of the animal was something that people did because they didn't waste like we waste in this society. So part of the cost of waste is that we miss those nutrients and the nutritious quality that comes from those things. So traditional life, the people I lived to see that lived to be the oldest were people who did that and who, people who also were connected with each other. In Morocco, that was my sheikh when I first, first sheikh I had in Morocco was 112. And there was an immediate connection and people couldn't sit with him without tears coming because his heart was so open. 
The, I met a man in Pakistan who was something like 90, and he was, he was the picture of health. And I said, well, what, how do you, you know, what do you attribute your health to? How does this happen? And they ate very simply. They ate bread and a little bit of vegetables and sometimes some meat, mostly bread. And when they were ill, his family had a tradition of going out and running. But they, were very, they didn't overeat. They were very thin people, very tall. And I was impressed. I thought, this man is healthy. And then he said, I'd like you to meet my father. And his father came in. <laughs> Wallahi, I said, OK, this is awesome. And his father was maybe 20 years old, something like that. And then he said, I want you to meet my father. And the grandfather came in. So that was their style. They ate very simply, and they kept very active, and they were very well connected with each other, alhamdulillah.